And then finally, number three, we got this piecewise function. Notice that it has three pieces cos of x when x is less than 0, 1 half to the power of x when x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 2, and then x over x plus 6 when x is greater than or equal to 2. So this one's going to take a little bit more work than the previous two. There's two meeting points. There's this meeting point of 0 and then this meeting point of 2. So we're actually going to have to go through these conditions twice. Right, but first let's start with... Um, x is less than 0. And I'm actually not going to do a graph for this one at the same time. I'll do the graph at the end just so you could see how you can answer these questions without doing a graph at the same time. Switch it up a bit. So notice for x values less than 0, it's defined by this function cos x. And since cos x is continuous, for what? For XCR, it is continuous for X values less than zero. If it's continuous for all X values, then it's also going to be continuous for X values less than zero by deductive logic. And so because of that, that means that this function F of X, this piecewise function, is continuous for x values less than 0 as well. So I, in the previous examples, in the previous two, I didn't put this statement, but uh, in this example, I'm going to put this statement. It's just a little bit more proper. I just kind of realized that, right? So since cos x is continuous for xcr, that means it's continuous for x values less than 0. And since cos x for x values less than 0 is within this piecewise function f of x, it also means f of x is continuous for x values less than 0. So that's the full proper way to kind of show that the piecewise function is continuous for x values less than 0. Okay, now because there are two meeting points at 0 and 2, we got to deal with the domain between 0 and 2. And then at the end, we're going to deal with uh, x values at 0 and for the x value at 2. For now, let's just deal with between 0 and 2. And between 0 and 2, notice that this piecewise function is defined by 1 half to the power of x. And so since 1 over 2 to the power of x, notice that's just an exponential function and its domain is xcr. So since 1 half to the power of x is continuous for all x values, xcr, um, it is also continuous for uh, x values between 0 and 2. So 1 half to the power of x is continuous for all x values, which by deductive logic means that it's continuous for x values between 0 and 2 as well, which means that f of x, this piecewise function, is continuous for x, for x values between 0 and 2 as well. Again, I know it's kind of silly writing all these statements down, but uh, yeah, in case, uh, in case your teacher wants it to be this specific, unfortunately, we got to go through it. And then uh, the next, so that's for x values between 0 and 2, and then we got to deal with uh, x values greater than 2. So for x values greater than 2, this piecewise function is defined by x over x plus 6. And notice that x over x plus 6, it has a vertical asymptote at negative 6. So if we were to take this, a little review from advanced functions and graph it, notice it's a linear function over a linear function. There's a horizontal asymptote at 1 because it's 1 over 1, the ratio of the leading coefficients. So I'm going to draw that. 
that's one. There's a vertical asymptote at negative six, which would be over here. Notice that there is an x and a y intercept at zero. So this function x over x plus six, it basically looks like this. So notice that the domain is XER, but X cannot equal to negative six because there's a vertical asymptote there. So what that means, I'm gonna erase these ones here. That means that this function X over X plus six is continuous for X values between negative infinity and negative six Right, so if all these x values over here are just going to continue to go on. It's going to be continuous for all of that. Then there's going to be a break at negative 6 for that vertical asymptote. And it's also going to be continuous for x values from negative 6 to positive infinity. So from here all the way to positive infinity. That function is continuous for these x values here in these two sort of areas. Which means because of this, because it's continuous from negative six to positive infinity, it is also gonna be continuous from two to positive infinity for all the x values greater than two. So this function is continuous for these x values, therefore it is continuous for x values greater than two because x values greater than two are within this area here, this part of the domain. Continuous for those x values, therefore is continuous for x values greater than two, which means f of x, the whole piecewise function, is continuous for x values greater than two as well. Right, so this one was a little tougher to deal with. But because that discontinuity happens at negative 6, but this function is defined for x values greater than 2, which is like all of this, if this is an x value of 2, that's always going to be continuous for x values greater than 2, which means that the piecewise function is also going to be continuous for that area. All right, and now what we can do is we can deal with the meeting points. The x value of zero, let's start with that. So we gotta go through these conditions for the meeting points. So first condition, we gotta show the limit as x approaches zero of f of x exists. So what we gotta do is approach zero from that negative side of the function. We gotta approach zero from the positive side of that function. And if we're approaching zero from the negative side, we're using this function here. So that's the same as the limit as x approaches zero from the negative side of cos x. And as we approach zero from the negative side of cos x, if you remember cos x has a coordinate zero and one, so we're approaching a y value of one, if we plug in zero here for this x value. And then as we approach zero from the positive side of this piecewise function, we're using this function here. So this would be the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of one over two to the power of x. If we plug in zero for that function, we'd also get one. Anything to the power of zero is always one. And so since we're approaching that same y value from both sides of zero, it means the limit as x approaches zero of this entire piecewise function is equal to one. So that's the first condition. Uh, number two, we have to show that f of zero is defined. And notice that the x value for the piecewise function is defined here. So we got to use this function. So we would plug in one over two to the power of zero, and we would get one. And so notice that third condition, since the limit as x approaches zero of f of x is equal to f of zero, and they're both equal to one, therefore f of x is continuous at that x value zero, at 
uh, x is equal to 0. Right, so we dealt with one of the meeting points, and now we got to deal with the uh, final meeting point at that x value of uh, 2. And so what we're going to do is go through the three conditions again at that x value 2. So first condition, we've got to show that the limit as x approaches 2 of this function exists. So we got to approach 2 from the negative side. We got to approach 2 from the positive side. Now, if we're approaching 2 from the negative side, so x value is less than 2, we're going to be using this function here. So that's going to be, um, sorry, that's going to be the same as the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of 1 over 2 to the power of x. And if we plug in 2 for the x, we'll have 1 over 2 to the power 2, which would give us 1 over 4. Right? That exponent you would uh, distribute to the numerator to the 1 and to the denominator of 2. 1 to the power 2 is 1. 2 to the power 2 is 4. So as we approach 2 from the negative side of this function, 1 over 2x, it's equal to 1 over 4. Which means as we approach 2 from the negative side of the piecewise function, it's also equal to 1 over 4. And then as we approach 2 for the piecewise function from the positive side of 2, or for x values greater than 2, we got to use this function here. So it would be the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of x over x plus 6. If we plug in 2 here, we would end up with 2 over 2 plus 6, so it would be 2 over 8 which reduces to 1 over 4. And since we're approaching that same y value from both sides of 2, it means that this overall limit as x approaches 2 of this piecewise function exists, and it also equals 1 over 4. And we showed it right here. That would be the work to show that that limit exists and equals 1 over 4. And then uh, condition number 2, we got to show that f of 1 over 4, or uh, sorry, f of 2 rather, my bad. We got to show f of 2 is defined. Um, and notice that for the piecewise function, that x value 2 is defined here, because x value is greater than or equal to 2, so we would plug in 2 for this function, so we'd end up with 2 over 2 plus 6, which gives us 1 over 4. So condition 1, condition 2 holds, and they're both equal. So the final condition, since the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to f of 2, which is equal to 1 over 4, since that holds, then f of x, that piecewise function, is continuous at that x value of 2. And so we are done for this uh, piecewise function. We showed that it's continuous for x values less than 0 at the x value of 0 between x values 0 and 2 at the x value 2, which we did right here, and then also for x values greater than 2. And so since we showed it for all x, e, r, it means that this piecewise function is continuous for x, e, r. And if you were to make a graph of this, I'll make a quick, uh, I'll make a quick sketch here. I'll do my best to make it look pretty. So cos x when x is less than 0, we know cos x at an x value 0, it, uh, it has a y value of 1, which is up here. And so we know it's a wave that continues to go like that. 1 half x, just in general, 1 half x, it basically looks like this. And it goes through that same y-intercept of 0 and 1, which is here. This point is 0 and 1. So if we graph that, that's going to be uh, something like that. 
okay? And it's going to go till two. So we would uh, erase this part here. So notice it meets at that uh, y value of one when x is equal to zero. And then over here at this uh, x value two, it stops. And then we have this function, x over x plus six. And the way that that function looked like, if you remember, we had a vertical asymptote here, horizontal here. It looked like that. And so from that x value of two, right, if we kind of continue that pattern, it's going to be, it's going to continue increasing like that, but there's going to be that horizontal asymptote of one there. I'm not going to continue it over here. So this would keep increasing up until, actually it should be a little higher because this is one, so that horizontal asymptote. And then so we can maybe make this a little bit more steep like that, approach that one a little quicker. Anyway, hopefully you get what I'm saying. We're just graphing this part of x over x plus six for the piecewise function. And they both have that same y value. At that x value of two, they, the, both of these have that y value of one over four. All right, so let me erase that. And so roughly, that's how this piecewise function is going to look. So notice it's going to continue being continuous from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, and it has those same y values at those two meeting points of 0 and 